What's happening, my YouTube family? I am excited about this new series entitled, It's Not Over. Yep, the death, the burial, look like it's over, but there's always gonna be a resurrection. What? It's not over. I wanna encourage you to wait on your resurrection. My brothers and my sisters, my YouTube family, let's do this series together. Come on and give God a hand, priest, for his shed blood. What can wash away my sins? What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Nothing. I want to take this time to thank um, Pastor Jamon. That was an amazing word on last week. It was an amazing word. And I'm grateful that I don't have to worry when I leave. Amen. That you get fed really, really well. I was listening to that like, come on, bro. Amen. I want you to get your Bibles and I want you to go. We're going to read quite a few scriptures at the top of this. More than we normally read, but I want you to make sure that you get it. Um, and I don't care what it looks like. I need your confession to be, it's not over. Can everyone just open your mouth and declare that? It's not over. If you study scriptures, and I know that sometimes someone says, you know, you always have a saying stuff because there's so much power in your words. If you study the scripture, the Bible says that when Samuel spoke, none of his words hit the ground. In other words, what you speak becomes your reality. And I know it looks tough, but we rebuke the look and we speak to your faith. Faith arise. And I need you again to open your mouth and I need you to say, in regards to your situation, it's not over. Yes. If you have your Bibles, come on, let's go. Matthew 27, we're going to begin reading at the 57th verse. And it says, as evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, a rich man, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Every disciple is not poor. But there are many of you all, he's making you wealthy so that you could sponsor the kingdom. I need, I need you to open your mouth and say, I'm one of the wealthy disciples. <laughs> Sometimes when you have money, it gives you influence. And the Bible says, going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he... Y'all ain't gonna play that off. Stop. Because somebody, that scared them. I almost laid on the floor myself. I'm from the west side. You just can't bust out with no unexpected noise. Okay. Excuse me, let me go west side. Whoever did that, your mama. Listen. Let's continue reading the word. <laughs> Verse 16. He placed it in his own tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb the next day. Please pay attention to the haters. That even when it looked like it's over for you, it's still not enough. The next day, one after preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, after three days, I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure, at least until the third day. 
Otherwise, his disciples will come and steal the body and tell the people that he has been risen, raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Watch Pilate take a guard. Go make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and then posted a guard. Keep paying attention how the enemy keeps doing more and more to try to shut you down. But when he finish, nothing will be able to stop you from becoming who God has created you to be. Come on, just nudge your neighbor, tell him it's not over. So allow me to show you a modern day. It's not over because some of y'all, you read the Bible, you say, well, that was back then. Allow me to show you how Tyler Perry went and purchased a car that he was homeless in. This is what he was sleeping in. And I'll show you his then and then I'll show you his now. He came from. He posted this video on Instagram of him taking a ride and his Geo Metro. He has told the story many times that before fame and fortune, he was homeless, living inside a car just like this one. The message he had to his followers, if you are still in the struggle, please fight on. That is a great inspiring message from Geo Metro to one of the biggest homes in Atlanta, soundstage in Southwest Atlanta. An influence around the world. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Never forget story. where you started from. He's no respect of persons. Bishop Jakes went to his house and while he was studying in his house, he started crying and he said, I didn't weep because of what he had. I wept because all of this was in that car. Your future is bigger than your apartment. You gotta hear me, you got to hear me. It's not over. I can, we can go home right now. It's not over, regardless of what it looks like. Let's just get a little revelation. Christ comes in riding on a donkey, and they have their palms out. And they're saying, hail, hail, hallelujah to the king of kings. Notice, they're waving their palms, and they're giving him praise. But soon they lay their palms down, and they turn on him. Some people are assigned to praise you one minute and then come against you the next. You have to hear this. You ready? When they crucify him, from the look of the crucifixion, it appears to be over. Let's give, can I give you the list? Everything that took place just to kill him. They beat him. They didn't just beat him, I mean they really beat him. To the point, you gotta hear me, to the point that he is unrecognizable. They strip him of his garments. And for many of you all, you've experienced some loss. They make him drag across up a hill. And for some of y'all, what you're carrying is heavy on you. They then stretch him, and for some of y'all, the stress is real. They didn't take a nail and they pin him down to a cross. And for many of you all, it appears that you've been pinned down. Then they hang him up for everybody to see him. Hear me clearly. Your suffering is not a secret. Everybody's able to see it. But I need, in spite of what you feel, in spite of what they see, I need you to hear the word of the Lord. It's still not over for you. God, let faith arise in this building. Let faith arise in this building. Let faith arise in this building. I need you to open your mouth and declare this right now. Don't just say it to yourself, but say it to the one to your right and your left. Hello, it's not 
over for me. It's not over for me in my house. It's not over for me in my business. It's not over for me in my dreams. It's not over for me in my healing. It's not over for me in my finances. It's not over for me in my church. It's not over for anything that's connected to me because he's going to perfect So as if that is not enough, the devil got to do more to make you feel like it's a wrap. How important must you be if the devil has to go overtime to shut you down? Some people, he shut them down with one hit, but you, you refuse to die. You refuse to give up. You have what I call a survivor's anointing. You keep getting up out of the bed. You keep coming to church. You keep lifting your hands. And every time you breathe, you make every demon mad in hell. I came to preach to the survivors today. You've been through enough, and watch me, and it still hasn't lightened up on you. But can I tell you something? The more they crush you, the higher you going to rise. You got this. So that's not enough, huh? That's not enough, huh? So let's paint a bigger picture. Let's paint a bigger picture that it's over. So can I give you... So then they take him down off the cross. Joseph goes and gets the body. And then when you read everything, the list of things that happened with the burial, surely it's a wrap. Can I show you the list? Number one, we have a dead body. We have a dead body that means that there's no breath and there's no pulse. And for many of you all, there's no oxygen coming in your situation. Number two, we have linen clothes, which means the appearance of it. We have grave clothes. And when people look at you, they think it's over from you. Oh, I know I look like it's over, but don't just wait. Then we have spices. The spices is what they clean the dead body with. So there's something coming out of your pores. And for many of you all, you, 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 out of your pores comes sadness. Out of your pores, when you open your mouth, we, it smells like it's over for you. You come in a room, we can see that you're carrying something heavy. The fourth thing that we see is a tomb which means that this is a permanent location. Based upon a tomb, surely it is a wrap. It's not just a tomb, we're gonna roll a stone in front of it. That's for those of y'all that feel like you've been boxed in. Can't seem to get out, uh-huh. It's still a setup. Then they seal it. They literally take concrete and they literally seal it. Go ahead, guard. Go ahead and roll the stone in front of it and this is what the enemy has done he's released some demons to roll a stone into your present location to roll a stone into your present location and you think once he leaves the stone there he'll leave but isn't it amazing how the enemy will assign somebody to watch you to make sure that you don't get out of what you're in but I still came to serve notice on the devil. I don't care what you've done. I know what I feel on the inside. I know what he showed me. I know what he told me. I'm only talking to faith people right now. Because I know from the outside, it looked like it's over. But you can keep focusing on the outside. I still know what he told me. And based, wait a minute, regardless of what it looked like, I haven't seen in it. I'm only talking to faith people. I'm only talking to faith people. Watch me. You do all this shouting, do all this speaking in tongues, do all this coming to church, and things keep getting worse. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? How do you think oil is produced? It has to be crushed. But oh, when the crushing is over, the oil is coming for. I need you to make sure you sit next to somebody that still believes that God got time to do what he said he gonna do. Watch me. Don't you sit around no negative people I can't have negative in my tube. I gotta have somebody that believe. I need everybody to put a declaration in your section. Turn that, tell everybody in your section, this section is about to be set free.
today. Come on, I need you to release that. I know what it looked like. I know what it feel like. I know what it smell like. But in spite of what it looked like, what it feel like, and what it smell like, God's about to be resurrected in this. Your name is about to be brought up. Your family is about to be released. Your business is about to take over. I didn't come to play with y'all today. I came to release faith in the building. Some of y'all, it's already looking better. Yeah, yeah, know. Come on, we out here now. Come on, you thought you killed me, but you only made me better. You thought you shut me down, but you just released me. You thought you held me back, but you only were pulling me back to launch me. All things about to work together for my. Come on, you're waiting to see. Tell three people. Keep speaking that it's not over. It's not over in your marriage. It's not over in your business. It's not over in your finances. It's not over in your body. It's not over in your mind. It's not over with your joy. It's not over with your peace. It's not over with your family. It's not over with your friends. It's Come on, you people of faith. We walk by faith, not by what it looked like. Sit down. Sit down. Not what it looked like. Not what it looked like. Not what it looks like. And from the looks of it, from the looks of it, from the looks of it, it looks like it's over. I'm looking at it too. You're right. It does look like it. But faith coming back. Okay, let's stop. Ready? Have a seat. Have a seat. So, what you got to understand is that even when it looks like it's over, there's something going on behind the scene. <laughs> you got to get that revelation. When it looks like it's over, there's something going on behind the scene. That everybody else, when they walk by, they be like, oh, they was a nice person. Oh, oh, you think it's over. Oh, no. This is just a chapter in the book. <laughs> so it looks, so there's something going on. Now you got to get this revelation. There's something going on behind the scene of what looks devastating. There's something going on, even while you sitting here, he's working a work. So it looks like it. So what's going on behind the scene? For everyone sound of my voice, you have to hear me now. God is the author and the finisher. And everything that you're going through was written in your chapter. When he went, when he told Ananias, go get Paul, he said, and tell him, pay attention to this, how much he must suffer. So he has to have some suffering to go with his victories. <laughs> That's like when the snake bit him, everybody stood back, oh my God, he's going he's gonna to swell up and die. And the Bible said he just shook it off. 
And I came to tell some of y'all, I don't care what bit others, and it's not going to fit. Well, why, why, does it, why doesn't it affect you? Because behind the scene, there's, a, there's another word that goes with my life. See, I knew you before I even put you in your mother's womb, and I've already decreed and declared that your ladder is going to be greater. You're not going to die in the wilderness. You're going to make it to Canaan. But part of your journey is, you know, there's a, everybody say, there's a word applied to my life. There's a word. Uh-huh. Yep, yep, yep. See, let me, let me, let me show you what I mean. Like, Whenever the Romans would crucify someone, they would literally leave their bodies out until they were completely decayed. They would allow the birds to fly in and basically eat away at their bodies so that everybody could see and cause fear. That's what they did to everybody. But when it came to Christ, he's not every. And some of y'all, you keep expecting for you to go down the same street that everybody else went down. But everybody didn't have a word spoken over their life. And there was a word that's been spoken that, you know, did you hear what I just said? Okay, wait, 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 what do you mean? What do you mean? So behind the scene, there's a word at work. What do you mean by that? You got to get this, you got to get this ready. You got to get this. There's a word behind the scene. So watch me. They left everybody else out, but Isaiah said, before he had even been born, Isaiah had already decreed, decreed and declared, no, you're not going to leave him out. His body's not going to decay in everybody else's face. Y'all understand that to me? So watch me. Watch, look, let's, let's find it in Isaiah. In Isaiah 53 and 9, it says, they, 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 they buried him with the wicked. They threw him in a grave. They even mentioned Joseph here with a rich man because Joseph had cut the grave out for himself, which was a very rich man. Even though he'd never hurt a soul or said one word that wasn't true. So never believe that your hit is caused because of something you did wrong. This, is, this hit is to get you to your destiny. So there's a word going on behind the scene, even if you got to cry. There's a word going on behind the scene, even if you got to feel some pain. Can I tell you what the, the word has to come forth? Oh, y'all say, okay, wait, wait. See, some of you all, you only want a good word. But what if I told you, you you're going to cry, but he's going to bottle up your tears. But I can't get your tears until I make you cry. But then I'm going to use your tears and I'm going to water your blessing. So all things are going to work together for your good. See, you sit up here worried about the tears. No, make sure God catch you. Bend over. Catch every tear. So when my blessing... Okay, wait. Come on, touch your name. Say, there's a word about to come forth. Behind the scene, behind the scene, behind the scene. In Isaiah 55 and 11, look what the Bible says. So my word, so my word, so my word, so my word, so my word that goes out from my mouth, I will, it will not return to me empty. It will not return to me empty. So behind the scene, a word had already been spoken in the Old Testament that he must be crucified, that he must be buried. There's a word, watch me, but will accomplish but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. So for everybody in the sound of my word and the sound of my voice, something is being accomplished and something is being achieved behind the scene. Did you hear what I just said? Something is being accomplished. I got you working on that job. Something is being accomplished. I got you living in this certain situation. Something's being achieved. I got you going through a certain, certain sickness right now. Something's being accomplished. You got, you watch me. You don't have any money right now? Something's being achieved. You got a few haters. Yep. Something's being accomplished. What's going on? There's a word that's about being produced in my life. Watch me. Anybody can praise God when you get out, but it takes a special person to give God a glory. Watch me. Come on, lean in. It takes a special person. Look at me. It takes a special person that in spite of being hit, you know what he's already said and what he said has to come to pass. I'm just going to see if I'm only dealing with emotional people or faith people. Because faith people believe that all things are going to work together for my good. Something being accomplished and something's being achieved. On the count of three, faith people only. Faith people only. Faith people only. Faith people only. They believe that his work still going to be accomplished. They believe that his work still going to achieve something. On the count of three, I need faith people to give God a praise for the word that is over your life. One, two, three. God. Let the word do the work. 
Let the word do the work. And it shall come to pass. 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 I need a few violent people in the building. On your way to your seat, shake the hand of three people and tell them, and it shall come to pass. If he said it, and it shall be so. And if he said it, and it shall be so. And if he said it, and it shall be so. And if he said it, in spite of what it looked like, in spite of what it feel like, in spite of what you're going through, it sh- your wordy self. Sit down with 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 your wordy self. self. There's a word over my life and he can't lie to me. He already told me my whole family gonna be saved. He already told me I'm the head, not the tail. He already told me that weeping may endure for a night. He already told me. Sit down. Okay. So behind the scene, behind the scene, behind the scene, the word is being worked. Sit down. Behind the scene, the word is being worked. Say what they shouting for, that word just hit them. That word just hit them right where they are and that word just told them that weeping may endure for a night. That word just told them joy is coming. You don't wait until joy comes. the scene everybody else think it's over for you but behind the scene pieces are coming together the word is written tell somebody say it's time to work it behind the scene stop stop ready sit down sit down sit down sit down sit down See, everybody else think it's over for you, but behind the scene, you working this thing. Behind the scene, you ain't just laying there. No, there's a work being done behind the scene. Everybody can't see what you working on. Come on, lady. Behind the scene. Behind the scene. You working it. Behind the scene. Hey, yeah, please sit down. How would you get it? Y'all sit down. Watch it. Come on, touch that. Say, say, I'm working it behind the scene. In Ephesians 4 and 9, it says, watch this. That in Ephesians 4 and 9, it says that he must descend before he ascend. So you got to go lower. How low can you? I mean, uh, look. Look. So watch me, watch me. So I remember Elder Cameron used to teach us. He kicked the back door out of the grave. Went down to hell. And held a three-day revival. Set the pulpit up. And preached to the captain so that they could be set free. I was like, I got to find this in the Bible. Please pay attention. Bible. Oh my God. First Peter 3 and 18. While they got the tomb sealed, he was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. 
after that spirit was being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits. Shut the front door. So while the grave is sealed, he just set up a pulpit and began to make declarations. You know, you know what I just said? He began to make proclamations. What am I trying to say to you? Behind the scene, you got to be working on something. You can't let everybody know that you're working on your book. You can't let everybody know that you're working on your business plan. You can't let everybody know that you're fixing your credit. You can't let everybody know behind the scene you work working things that don't nobody even know about. You, have, what's me, you begin to work your prayer life. You begin to work your worship life. Behind the scene, people think you're just laying there. I ain't just laying there. I'm getting up every morning. I may not have a job, but I got a vision. I'm looking at some of y'all and the Lord told me to tell you you've been working behind the scene and your payday is about to pay off come on John 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 calm down John calm down John calm down John what's three what's three what's three it's about to pay off Behind the scene, behind the scene, behind the scene, he stretches some of y'all. Right? Right, you got to get this. Look at me, look at me. So before there was a, 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 um, a pastor, Anna, I was an evangelist. But before I was an evangelist, pay attention, I was a youth leader. Just a youth leader. Back in our day, we didn't call you no youth pastor. A pastor? You, are, you better lead these youth and get your behind somewhere and sit down. <laughs> you better lead these kids. But one time while, I, while I'm leading youth, he said, I need you to begin to work on sermons. I said, work on sermons? He said, I went and bought a notebook and I started working on sermons. I literally... Worked on about 10 to 15 sermons. I mean, they were hot in my head. In my head. Woo! I was killing them. In my head. Had not preached one sermon. Then the Lord said, go take you some headshots. I went downstairs. I raised my hand to God. I leaned over a table and took a headshot. I got pictures. I got sermons. I got pictures that don't nobody know about. Because in my head, I'm about to be international. Pose now for what you'll see later. I'm trying to get some of y'all ready for where he's about to take you, but you got to work it behind us. Some of y'all should have got up because you've been working on something behind the scenes. And the Lord told me heaven has been paying attention to everything you've been doing. And it's about to pay off. Those of you all that's been working, release the praise right there. Go, go, go. Tell him I've been working day and night. Didn't nobody see me, but he wake me up in the midnight hour. Make me get up and think about something. Won't let me sleep all night. Make me dream about it. I need you to tell somebody my time is almost up.
people thought I was wasting time. But when you think I'm wasting time, I'm making up time. Come on, look at somebody and say this. It's getting ready to happen. I don't like the way some of y'all said that thing. I need you to say that thing like it's everything you got. Although it looks like it ain't happening. You got to open your mouth and declare that it's about to happen. Look at somebody and say, it's getting ready to happen. My name is about to be called. My name is about to be called. My name is about to be called. I've been telling you to say your name, but you've been looking at the situation. I need you not to look at the situation and call your name by faith. On the count of three, say your name and put a praise behind your name. One, two, three, John Hannah. Now open your mouth and say, my name is about to be called. You can't say it like Jabari, but you can say it in your own voice. My name is John Hannah. My name is about to be called. Some of y'all should say the name of your business and it hasn't even come out yet. You should say the name of your book, your play, your company, and it hasn't even come out yet. It's almost time. While the word was working, the clock was ticking. While I was working, he was monitoring my time. Come on, we got to get ready to get out of here. Turn to tell somebody the word is working. While you working. Now tell them is about to work on your behalf it's about to be your turn you turn for everybody else now it's about to be your turn you should practice jumping in you so used to turning you haven't practiced your jump in buddy your season is about to be up I don't know where you're going but you're gonna have to leave here in a few more minutes warn your enemy they season is about to be up you need to calm down believe that God has not forgotten about you those of y'all that know that it's not over for you I need you to lift your hands and worship God for the next 10 seconds go it's for an appointed time you're only supposed to be in it for an appointed time you're only supposed to be in it for an appointed time and when the time is up, you're going to feel a rush. I 
I try to come up looking good, but I can't help myself. My clothes don't mean nothing to me because I'm ready to get out of the situation that I've been in for. Ready? Listen, everybody hear me. You're only, you're only, you're only supposed to be in this situation for a set. You got to get the revelation. There's a set time. There's a set time. And only you can make it longer. So behind the scene, the clock is ticking. And the Bible says, ready? When Jesus began to tell them about the prophecies, he said in Matthew 20 and 18, they will condemn him, talking about himself, to death. And they're going to hand you over to the Gentiles. Watch me. They're going to mock you. And they're going to beat you. And they're going to crucify you. But when they get done doing all of that, when they get done, pay attention to the timing now. Because your ladder going to be greater. On the third day, not the fifth day, not the seventh day, there's a, there's a set time that you go. set time that you're gonna come out so what's gonna happen now I need now I need your attention hold the music cuz some of y'all I got I got to explain spiritual stuff to you spiritual stuff me at a certain time you are gonna feel a rush in the spirit it's like something gonna come over you gonna be like oh and it's gonna be like an urgency like oh my god oh my god and some of y'all you cannot ignore your quickening It's going to be like a, uh. and to somebody, they're going to feel like, well, why are you moving so fast? No, you don't know my lockdown season. You just met me. So according to you, it looked fast. But there's about to be a rush. Mm. When it's your turn, phew. Come on, tap yourself say, my spirit is about to be quickened. Watch this. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, you can't stay here. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body that you gonna be. Oh, see, see, spiritual people, spiritual. See, natural people. This, this, this is this is strange to you, but I can tell you, out of nowhere, when you feel like you've been on lockdown, it's gonna be like a. You gonna have an urgency like. I can't explain it, but the Lord told me to start going to every open house. I can't explain it, but, but you ain't got no money. It don't matter. God just told me to start going. I can't explain it, but I got to get my, I got to send my resume here. I got to, I got to do what God told me to do. I got to get up and come to prayer. I got to be on the altar. I can't explain it, but my address is about to change. I can't explain it. your hands and worship God for five seconds. It's not over. It's not. It's not over. Ready? You ready? So last week when Pastor Jerome was preaching, Jesus told the people sitting around the, the tomb, roll the stone away. You'll never read where when it came to Christ, Anyone had to roll the stone away. And for some of y'all, the revelation is your next move won't need man. Mm. 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 The stone is about to be rolled away. 
Did you see this mark? Lean up and look. You know why he looking? Because he's about to be replaced. And the Bible says then the guard hit the ground, fell out. And when the guard was out, heaven released the angel to announce, why seek ye the living among the dead? I came to tell you, heaven is about to announce your next. I don't care about no Facebook posts. I'm gonna make sure that God announced everything that's about to happen in your life. So everyone, everyone listen. Everyone listen. If you never hear me, hear me now. He wouldn't start something and not finish it. You have seen too many signs that God has been working in your behalf for you to get to a tomb and say, I guess it's over. No. Oh, if I knew you, I would bust you in the top of your head. I would just hit you so hard. Look, 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 look. He wouldn't start this process. It just leave you out there. He wouldn't bring you out of what he brought you out of. And then let you die like this? Come on now, come on. You have to control your tomb. Bible, bring the scripture up. You gotta be confident of this. That the God that began a good work. He didn't just begin a good work. He, he began a good work in you. In what's me? Which means that you got to know your own progress. You got to know your own story. You got to know that you are not who you used to be. And you're not who they say you are. Every confident person release a praise for your godly confidence. Be confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion. <laughs> you gotta hear me. He even add in your mess ups. He knew you were gonna fall before you fell. He told Peter, Peter, you're gonna deny me three times, but oh, when you return, use that and strengthen somebody else. Come on, I need you to. So for everyone, I, need, I, I know what it is to feel stuck. I know what it is. I know what it is to feel like, man, but I had to build up my confidence. When I became confident in who I was, look at me, in who I am, and stop letting people tell me who I am. And when I became confident in his works, I began to realize that delay is not denial. Hold on. Now, pay attention to this. Why would he bring you into a record-breaking year and not break your record? I can't look at everybody, but I need y'all to get them the John Hanna look. Prepare yourself, because it's not over. What you got? Let your power fall When your name is called Prove Prove the doubt is wrong Even me God, you're still mighty and strong Somebody need a little time on the altar? Get out to me. Fight this battle for me 
and hear my unbelief so I can tell all my friends when I come out this tune that you have won again. Say it again for me. Let your power fall when your name is called through the daughter's roll. God, yes, your mighty and strong to fight this battle for me. Come on! And to help my unbelief, yeah, so I can tell all my friends that you have won again. I hear this in the spirit. I hear this in the spirit. Because some of y'all, it's been rough. I need you to close your eyes and lift your hands. Just say like the man said that brought his son to Jesus. Jesus said to him, all things are possible if you just believe. He said, Lord, I believe. But based upon the situation and how long I've been going through, sometimes I don't believe. That is a real transparent moment. That is an honest place. Lord, I believe but help my unbelief. Can you lift your hands and say, Lord, I believe. Now come on, call for help in that unbelief area. Help me to believe for my marriage. Help me to believe for my children. Help me to believe for my body. Help me to believe for what I've been waiting on for a long time. Lord, I believe, but help now my unbelief. Sing it one more time, Jabari, for me. Let your power fall when your name is called through of the doubters wrong. Oh, 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 God, you're still mighty and strong. So fight this battle for me. Yeah. Yes, God. And help my so I can tell all my friends that you have won again. Hey, while you were praising God, you even got closer according to this clock. You're almost there. I need you to fill some space in with a praise. I need some of y'all to begin it. Everybody that feel like you've been stuck. Everybody that feel like things aren't moving as fast as you want. Everybody that has been under any kind of warfare. I need you to get ready to release the praise. I need to fill some time with your praise if you don't mind. Lift your hands and open your mouth and release the loudest praise you have right here. Go, go. Glory to God. There it is. Fill that space. I believe God, I believe God, I believe God. I believe God, I believe God. Let your faith arise. Let faith fill this building. Let confidence fill this building. Let confidence be strong in the Lord. 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 In the Lord. Come on, iron sharp desire. I need you to hug three people and tell them, you got this. He's about to finish what he started. He's about to finish what he started. He's about to finish what he started. Your name is about to be called. It's getting ready to happen. It's about to be a record-breaking year. I'm only talking to people of faith. I'm only talking to people of faith. I'm only talking to people of faith. In spite of what it looked like, in spite of what it's been feeling like, in spite of what your eyes see, what does the word of God say to you today? Come on, on 
your way back to your seat. That's three people that say, my time is almost up. My time is almost up. My time of being in this same location. My time of working in this same location. My time of feeling what I've been feeling. My time of going through what I've been going through. I was some of y'all that believed in divine timing. Everybody that believe in divine timing. Everybody that believe in divine timing. It's bigger than your age. I feel a break in the spirit. Wait, wait, wait. Everybody 50 and older, I need you to get ready to release a praise in here. I got to see who got the most win. If you're 40, if you're 50 and older, on the count of three, release a praise. One, two, three. Hey, 49 and under, what if I told you that you won't have to wait as long as we wait? What if I told you he's about to give you what it took me 10 years to do? God's going to let you do it in two years. 49 and under. Based upon the prophetic word that you just heard. If you believe that, on the count of three, release of praise. One, two, three. But in spite of our age, I'm sorry, I feel like I need to have a praise break. I feel like I owe God like 30 second dance. Because when I was about to give up, a strong wind came in the building to let me know that it's not over. I'll be back. You won't be long from now. You won't be long from now. 
are getting better. Slow from now. Things are about to get better. Turn and tell somebody, my name is about to be called. the word is working while you in there you working it and while you in there time <laughs> I'm closer now than I was five minutes ago Everybody lift your hands, can I just hold the music? Let me hear nothing but worship. Hold me on music, hold on music. Come on, let me hear your worship. There's a sound that should be coming out of your tomb. There's a sound coming out of your tomb. I don't care what it looked like. God got you. God got you. I just need you to be confident that he going to finish what he started. Get on the fire. There are 10 to 12 people in this building. Everyone stand. <clears throat> there are 10 or 12 of them you in here. I came to get you out. Like, I came literally to get you out. The word has been working. The word is working. And I know it looked bad, but for some of y'all, he had to take it this low just to get you. And if you're ready for your new season, get out of your seat. Number one, you're going to accept the Lord as your Savior. Some of y'all are already saved. You just need the right village. Get out of your seat and walk towards me right now. Move. Move. It's a new season in your life. Start walking towards me immediately. Just come stand here. It's a new season in your life. Stand right here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. It's a new season. It's a new season it's a new season I got you. come on out of your grace get out of your seat Supposed to be five more people up here. I hear the word of the Lord. There's someone you're you're degreed. You have a degree, and it's part of frustration coming with you because you did all of this and nothing has worked. And I hear the Lord say, "Well, when you come to me, I'm about to release you. I couldn't let you be released without me." Get out of your seat and come now. Move. 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 
against the people coming out of the balcony. And the same spirit that quickened Christ's body is about to also quicken your mortal body. He's changing you. Move. Move. Those of you that are here, you are called out. You're not here by chance or by accident. This is divine timing. I want you to look on that stage. All the sand has run out, which means it's your time. <laughs> We're going to take you out. We're going to pray with you. We're going to welcome you into this family. We're about to walk this thing called life out with you because we're excited about your future. Do me a favor. Can everyone just turn this way and follow that gentleman right there? Come on. Follow that gentleman right there. Come on, y'all. Celebrate these souls. Celebrate these souls. Celebrate these souls. Celebrate these families. Everyone have a seat for one minute and I'll have you out. I know we normally collect tithes and offer now. Do me a favor, put your purse down. Put your purse down, put your wallet up, put your phone down. Lift your hands and give God your worship before you give him anything else. Come on, give God your worship before you give him anything else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody pay attention to me. Even financially, I know what it is to be stuck. I know what it is for your finances to be dead, not have any life. I know that feeling. I lived in that tomb for years. But even while I was in my tomb, he had me to start working it. He had me to start sewing. In my tomb is where he taught me how to save. In my tomb is where he worked on me behind the scene to control my spending habit. In my tomb is how he showed me how to pay off my bills. In my tomb is when I made my confession that I will be a 100% debt-free individual and that I will owe no man. In my tomb is when I begin to change my confession that I'm living in Ephesians 3.20. So when the stone was rolled away, when he presented me, he presented me as a new individual. This is your record-breaking year. When it comes to us as believers, when it comes to our finances, see, it's hard to talk to people who've always had. Y'all gonna stop with these out-of-the-blue sounds. <laughs> Trying to scare a brother. So look at me. I speak for most of you all what it is to live from check to check. I speak from it. So how did you break it? I had to learn, not just tithes and offering, I had to learn, I had to seek God for wisdom on how to deal with money. Never took a financial class. God began to give me insight. And for many of you all, this is your record-breaking year even financially. But you're going to have to open your hand. Bible says he gives a seed to the sower. I'm amazed at how he won't let me leave this because he said, what I put on the screen covers everybody. There are four seeds that you can sow. Tithes, we give that. You just give your tithes. That's it. But your offering, 
Is it 23? Is it 46? Is it 69? Or is it 92? For some of y'all, you've been given 23 all year. It's a new quarter. I hear the Lord say, up your game. I know what it is. I'm not telling you something. I know what this is. You could text the words NOCSC to 91694, but everybody in this building, everybody online, out of these four, which can you sow? And what, what kind of seed is this? this is called, I call this my exit seed. Oh, I'm coming out of this. How many of y'all know you coming out of this? I know what it looked like, but I know what I shall become. Come on, which one is it? Is it 23, 46, 69, and 92? You can text and give. You can on our, on our app, you can give. Our website, you can give. You can write a check. If you have cash, you can give. You get an envelope on your way out the building to your right and your left. You'll see deposit boxes, and you give. Everyone stand to your feet, but everyone get a seed in your hand. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I love you. Everybody need a hype man. That's my hype man. I love you, Pastor. I love you too, bro. <laughs> so I want to say this. Let, let's take your seat first. Lift your seat up to the Lord. Repeat after me. I'm a tithe and a giver. And I am blessed beyond measure. I have more than enough. I'm living in my overflow. I am living in Ephesians 3.20. How long are we going to live it? For the rest of my life. I am so excited that Easter is almost here. Sunday, April the 9th, we're going to do all three services, 7.30, 9.30, and 12.30. You know why I'm excited? Because the doors of the church are open. Hey, I'm expecting you, your family, and your friends to come here to New Life, 7621 South Greenwood, to be what? Be my guest. What are we doing? Celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Easter Sunday, all three services. Come on, the doors of the church are open.